Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Blanca Rodriguez, and she is here today, and she has some amazing things she wants to talk about. She wants to talk about negativity, talk about self-love, self-care, and a lot of things that are going on in this world and how they affect our lives and what we can do in our own lives to change these things and make our lives better. So she does many things. She is an author. And she also has, she's a massage therapist. She does holistic health. She's a speaker and she does coaching. So she does it all. So, you know, we have her today on the show and I am so excited to have you, Blanca. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Thank you so much, Stacey, for having me here. First and foremost, what an honor to be here in your fantastic show My name is Blanca. I am a licensed massage therapist for the state of Florida. I'm a certified canine massage therapist. And no, canine massage is not rubbing the dog. Canine (laughs) massage is not petting the dog. Canine massage is massage, definitely. I am a Toastmaster speaker, book author. I love what I do. I'm an animal lover since I was a little girl. So it's a huge honor to spread my wings and be able to do canine massage. And the beautiful effects that canine massage has in dogs are very similar or almost equal as the wonderful effects that massage has on us humans. And it's it's been a practice that has been around for millennia since 2017. 700 BC, actually. So that is something that I'm very passionate about. I'm very passionate about helping others improve their quality of life, no matter what age we are is so important. So that's basically amongst other things that I definitely do. I love my co-authorship. And basically, we are here with a same goal, a similar mission, which is help others live better lives. And not get lost in the sauce that everything is bad because it actually is not. We can do so much better and we are all capable of it. It's so true. It's so true. Now, what made you go down this road that made you feel so passionate about helping others and and showing, you know, different ways of improving your life through self-love, self-care and all these different therapies that you offer? Um, Was there something that drove you to this 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 area of your life? Yes, absolutely. When I was eight years old, I lost my father, my father very tragically and and under very tragic circumstances. And back in that day, I was growing up in Puerto Rican culture. Mm -hmm. And back in that day, it was the culture of you don't talk about the dead. And that was a big childhood trauma that I carried with me for a very long time and very dark seasons ensued um, because of this. I grew up as well around a lot of chronic mental illnesses that they were not treated. It was, I mean, back in the day, my own mother had chronic mental illness. It was untreated. But when we are we are growing up around this environment, we really have no comprehension of how bad it is until we keep on growing up and saying it's like, oh, my God, I grew up around a lot of confusion, a lot of sight, a lot of silence, childhood trauma, not being treated. And that definitely was the gasoline yeah. for me to push through those situations, grow up out of it, learn the lesson. And like Oprah Winfrey says, turn your wounds into wisdom. And I definitely started, once I started really applying, really working on what was the rooting of my low self-esteem, low self-worth, being in a world of confusion, looking for the outside when everything was coming from within in order to lend the lesson, grow, move on and help others along the way. I've been, I've been in the industry of being a helper ever since I can remember. I was in the hotel industry first, then I was an assistant, then, then massage therapy, then canine massage therapy, then, and then, and then, and it's always, my rooting has 
always been about helping others improve their quality of life. And even more so, and once I improve my own quality of life, everything just goes flawlessly. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Oh, that's mm-hmm. wonderful. And I love how you you mentioned that, you know, when you stop looking out on the outside and you start to focus on the inside, that's when things really changed for you. And I think that's a thing that a lot of people don't really know how to do is to dig deep into their emotions and really understand what's going on with themselves. Because a lot of times people tend to repress emotions, a lot of anger, a lot of depression, a lot of fears, um, you know, low self-esteem. And it all stems from a lot of times our childhood years and how we grew up. And, uh, you know, and what people, you know, tend to do is they push it aside and they just repress it and they keep moving on. But then their actions, their outbursts, their behaviors exemplify that there is something going on. Absolutely. 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 I was doing some research not long ago and I this is, you know, pretty startling, but it's the reality Mm -hmm. that two thirds of all children in the world will have some traumatic experience by the time they reach 16 years old, either by the sudden and violent loss of someone, being bullied by family members or at school or even assault. Mm -hmm. I went through all of them at a very, very young age. Um, my father died suddenly and tragically when I was eight years old. When I was nine years old, I was sexually assaulted for, for the first time. And it was total taboo. I didn't say anything. I mean, I kept in the world of silence until I published my book. Yeah. Hardly two years ago. And even my own sister that she is my soulmate, she's like, oh, my God, I didn't know this. I'm like, well, honey, nobody knew until I finally said something about it. And it felt and it felt really empowering. It felt very healing. My healing journey started really, really that side of me really started when I started writing down my chapter in that book. And there is no turning back from that when I'm in grateful for the lessons, grateful for all the help and more, very, very important. Don't do it alone. Yeah, There's no need to do it alone. There's no need to stay quiet. There is no need to feel the shame. I felt it all the shame the silence was it me did I have to do anything with this oh maybe it was my fault and living a life like that blaming myself for something that I had no control over was very very hard but I am here to tell everybody that there is a way there is a way and no matter what age we are we're all capable of change there's this powerful Uh, inspirational speaker Jim Rohn rest in peace he used to say life does not get better by chance it gets better by change and that is very powerful yes that's so true that's so true now for people who are lost and they feel like there's like so many different highways they don't know where to go because I find when emotions get repressed a lot of times we feel like we're on a pot of boiling water and the water's ready to boil all over the top, you know, and you, or you like, you're on a hot and you can't control it. You can't, you know, there's nowhere there to lower the flame. You know, you're the only person that can lower the flame. Um, but then if you do lower the flame and you do calm down, a lot of people still feel numb inside and they feel like they're on a highway and there's six lanes and each of them turn off into a different direction and they don't know which direction to go in. And for for people who do want the help, but they just don't know where to begin, what do you suggest for them? One of the things that I have done over the years that have helped me tremendously for a start is journaling. The power of journaling is infinite. It's excellent for better quality quality of life. It's excellent when we are in depressive states. I used to have PTSD because I live in my mom. My mother used to be a hoarder 
because her chronic mental illness was that, I mean, that's only, that was only one reflection of her mental illness that it reflected directly on me and my siblings. So that PTSD was there. And one of the first things that really started helping me, even when I didn't look for help, I was too scared to speak. I was too ashamed to say something to anybody. One of the most powerful tools I have ever had since I was a kid is the power of journaling. That, it, that was my basic, that was my rooting to this healing journey. That is, let's put it this way. It's a lifelong thing. Our yeah. healing never stops. Just because we feel better in some aspects, there's always something to work on. There's always something to grow on because one of the six basic human needs is growth. Yeah. And we and if we don't grow, we stay stale. I have a mentor that he says we are either in a state of growth or a state of decay. Me personally, I'd rather be in a state of growth. And yeah. life is not about perfection. It's about progress but journaling going back to your question journaling was the rooting of all for me and i still journal to this day yep many many notebooks later over the years yes i love journal and that's one of the things that i always suggested to people i even wrote the positivity and gratitude journal just to focus on the positive and to focus what we have gratitude for because so many times we focus on the negative and we focus on what we don't have Instead of focusing on what we do have and focus on the beautiful things around us, even the grass that we walk on, the, the air we breathe, you know, going outside and seeing the flowers or the trees, we take that for granted. You know, people always anticipate that we're going to be here for X amount of time. We don't never know what the future may bring and we can only live in the present. And I find when it comes to journaling, especially when you write in a journal, I feel it's nice because sometimes it just releases all those emotions. And a lot of times if you're in a quiet spot, you tend to hear the voices in your head and it's like everything just comes to you. And if you put it all on paper, you know, it, it, it's like a release. It's, you know, you're, you don't have to talk to anybody. You could just write it and just get it out of your system. Release Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I cannot agree with you more. Um, there's situations where it can take us almost over the edge. Mm -hmm. There's moments when we feel that the walls are just closing in on us. Yeah. And that's why just, just, just like you said, go outside it's so powerful it's so healing it's so refreshing i um i was reading about socrates and socrates he used to teach his students while they were walking he mm -hmm. would never be in a classroom teaching his students he will be walking because that's when good ideas happen mm -hmm. relaxation yeah. admiring nature great oxygen intake for our bodies going yes. out to see the fresh air mm -hmm. and green and blue the colors of life what oh, yeah. is not to love about going outside doing some grounding practicing yeah. mindfulness being in the present just stay in that present moment feel yeah. the earth feel mother nature is so invigorating so empowering so yes absolutely mm -hmm. i cannot agree with you more i do them all oh, and I love it actually I love it love it mm -hmm. yeah I feel like we have to you know do things for ourselves even meditation is great and I love how you bring up self-love and self-care those are two things that you feel are very important and you know how are some of the ways that you demonstrate self self-care and self-love if people you know because in our in our society we're always on go 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 and especially moms, you know, they feel like they need to service it, their family, service their their children. And they the last person they take care of is, uh, is themselves. And if you don't take care of yourself, how can you take care of someone else? So, you know, I, I think and I think a lot of people also feel shame or guilt when they are taking care of others and not not taking care of and they put themselves first there you know it's that you know I'm, I'm being a bad person because i'm not taking care of this person i should be taking care of them and not me um when it's the opposite you should put yourself on a podium and then everybody else comes after you're at a point where you are taking care of yourself the way you should 
And, you know, how do you, how do you work, um, incorporate self-care into your life? Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Self-care should be a daily practice, not an emergency procedure. Yeah. And this happens to way too many of us. I have lived on both sides of the story, taking care of everybody first and lastly, me. Mm -hmm. It was draining. It was exhausting. I went on burnouts. I mean, it was horrible. It was horrible seasons of my life. And it was a very long time. In my culture, you, the kids are first, everybody's first, and then you put yourself last. Yes. When it should be the whole opposite. Once I started, because this is a journey and it's a little by little situation, I started my self-care. This is my self-care routine on a daily basis, no matter where I am at, no matter where I go. Exercising gratitude when I open my eyes first thing in the morning for yeah. the simplest things that we have in life, like my bed. Mm -hmm. a roof over my shoulders. Yes. We spend one third of our lives in bed. How important it is to have a comfortable bed to rest on because if we don't rest, we don't function well. Rest right. and sleep are imperative to have good quality of life. And in this age and era, it seems like Sleep is like, oh my God, that is an, uh, I mean, an ogre. Stay mm -hmm. away from me, sleep, because I'm wasting my time. No, that is investing beautiful time on self-care. Yes. I practice meditation. I exercise every single day. I go to the gym. Exercise is so important, yeah. vital for good quality of life, especially yes. as we age. I am going to be 59 years old. Wow. Um, you don't yes. look it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Um, but as we age, it's so important to understand that we age, things change. Life is about change. Change is a constant. Change is unavoidable. And accommodate the best routine that works for you according to your needs that is for sure yeah. i was at a i was at a trip and in the airport while we were worried waiting i am not going to be sitting down waiting to go sit down in a plane it's like yeah. no, let's go for a walk let's walk and walk and walk and that is part of my daily routine if i cannot go for a walk i'll go to the gym if i cannot go to the gym i'll do my stretches at home. I used to be a professional dancer and a Zumba teacher for many, many years. And I still teach, I, I still do private classes for ladies 55 plus. So mm -hmm. right there, it, there is part of my exercise routine and definitely exercising mindfulness on a daily basis. It keeps us centered. It keeps us calm and calm is a super power the calmer yes. we are the more we will be able to rationalize and think things thoroughly before we make the daily decisions that we make in life is so yes. important so definitely that is a daily practice and make it a daily practice our bodies do adapt we are we are beings of consistency and the more consistently we take care of ourselves we won't be able to be without when I don't yeah. exercise or do any kind of physical activity for more than three days. I, I'm like, oh, my God, there is something missing here. And it's my physical activity. Right. Definitely. So that basically basically is my daily routine. Very grateful for it. That's so good. Now, for people who say, I just don't have the time. You know, I hear that so many times from people. They don't prioritize what they what's important. And the first response that comes out of their mouth is, but I just don't have the time. What do you say to those people? I would say to them, wake up an hour before. Absolutely. Wake up an hour before and make it a daily routine. I'm a true believer that 
if we really, really want something, we will incorporate it to our lives no matter what. And I yeah. just, I mean, just like yourself, I hear it all the time. I just don't have time for it. I had to leave the house late uh, earlier. My kids, they had to go to school. And there is so many reasons why we don't incorporate, let's say, physical activity to our lives. But there is a huge reason why we should, which is better quality of life as we mm -hmm. age is so important oh, to yeah. have a good routine because when we age we lose muscle mass yeah. we lose our balance balance is one of the things i have taught to thousands of seniors okay mm -hmm. i have taught chair classes i have taught pool classes everything in the menu. And if there is one thing that these ladies, they just come to me to say thank you is because they have better balance, especially with the older population, people that live on their own. Having balance is so important. Having yes. that movement is so important. Mobility is so important, not only for the younger generation, it's for life all the way yeah. to our departure. I have seen many, many people, unfortunately, a fall on a senior is a death sentence. So right. please maintain your balance. Definitely exercise it. Maintain that good muscle mass. And what we have, we definitely keep. Oh, yes. sure. I, I, I agree a hundred percent with you. It's so important because, you know, and I agree with you, if someone really wants something, they make the time for it. You know, it's just an excuse, you know, absolutely. because people, when they really want something, they will make the time for it. Definitely. That's a, that's a, that's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel, I feel it's uh, very important to take care of yourself because I see, you know, 70% of illnesses is caused by stress. And when you are under stress, you know, you start, your walls start breaking down, your immune, your immune system is breaking down and you kind of just invite in illnesses and different things to come into your body and come into your life. And eventually it, it can mentally and physically destroy you. You know, I, I feel like, I feel like people really need to focus on what's best for them and, you know, and really take, you know, health, you know, very seriously, because, you know, if we want to live a happy, healthy and productive life, we have to make healthy changes in our, in our lifestyle. Absolutely. Absolutely. I cannot agree with you more. And it's never late to make those changes. Yeah. I have heard from, from, here we go again, I have massaged tens of thousands of people in my, in this beautiful career that I have. And I absolutely love it. I love helping people. We love helping people. Yeah. Definitely. We have these similarities and um, this is what happens with a lot of people. I am too old to start something new. Mm -hmm. I know everything that there is to know. No, that is not true. Yeah. We are here to learn something new every single day there is something new to learn all the way from little kids to the elders there's always something new to learn and i push on all of my patients my clients don't make your ailment an excuse to not do nothing right the time that you waste on a tv looking at whatever it is you can be easily doing something. There is even, there, there, I mean, there's chair exercises. Yeah. I teach classes for people that they have difficulty with their mobility. Even people in wheelchairs, I have taught classes to them. And there is chair classes. Yeah. And at least you have some mobility either, either on your upper body, yeah. your lower body, or both. Stretching, mm -hmm. how imperative it is. Yeah. People that... Uh, people that have sedentary careers, sitting on chairs all day long, right? Stand up, do some chair exercises. They're really, really helpful and powerful to maintain good body posture. Yes, definitely, definitely. So, yes, absolutely. We all have the capacity to make these changes. Is just 
having that determination and to me is like kind of a no-brainer if something yeah. is gonna make you feel better why not try it you may exactly. actually love it yeah yes. mm -hmm. exactly yes 100%. you know it's so good sometimes to incorporate new things sometimes people fear change but by making changes in your life, it could, it could make it be a huge difference. Even the smallest little changes we incorporate into our lives could be big, you know, have big results, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and to go back to like burnout, you were talking about how, you know, you, you were doing so much for everybody else that it got to the point where you felt like burnout. You know, I, I think that happens to a lot of people in our society nowadays. I think people are constantly on the go. They are constantly feeling under stress. Um, you know, there's so much going on and people, you know, handle things a lot differently than they did when we were growing up. And yes. I think people, you know, I see it all the time. They're, burnout has become such a popular topic because so many people are going through it. And a lot of times people don't even realize that they're going through it until they can feel the symptoms. And that usually is a little bit on the chronic side when you start feeling the symptoms, unless you're really in tune with your body. But most of the time, it's when you've passed that, that, that marker is when you start to realize, I think I'm in burnout. I think I'm burning out. You know, what do you say to those people? What do you suggest to prevent burnout from occurring in your life? To prevent burnout, we need to be very cognizant of what we do on a daily basis. Yes. What I have been doing for many years already, I always have a planner. And in this planner, I if I always write down my time for my prayer, meditation, exercise, which is I'm a very day person. Yeah. So I start my day with my prayer, meditation, exercising gratitude. If I'm going to journal, I do my journal first thing or last thing of the night. It doesn't yeah. matter, but journaling is imperative to help ourselves like okay let me decompress mm -hmm. before i start my day because i take care of a lot of people on a daily basis and having that alone time yes that me myself and i time is great for having that harmony and balance that we so very much need yeah. i have i have noticed over the years my daughter is 22 years old my son is 26 the younger generation right and i notice way too much that these kids are eternally tired mm -hmm. eternally tired how you doing son how you doing honey i'm tired i'm tired i'm tired i'm tired i'm stressed this is the thing. What we focus on expands. Mm -hmm. We are in a world, especially the younger generations, that it, everything is focused on stress. I work in two rehab centers for drug addiction and alcohol abuse. I see people of all walks of life, all ages. And the one word that I hear dozens of times in a weekly basis is i'm tired i'm stressed i'm tired i'm stressed what to do with this word that is so glorified which is stress de-stress yes find ways that will work for you to de-stress starting with what you do first thing in the morning Mm -hmm. Take a shower, make your bed, tidy up. A cluttered house is a cluttered mind is a cluttered life. Yeah. How you have your environment, it says a lot of what you're going through in life. Oh, yeah. That is, that is for sure. So oh, I, would that, I would recommend to everybody out there, the, the younger generation, the older generation, Look for ways to de-stress and for the love of Christ, stop it with the word. I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out. It's like, oh my God. I think that, let me see, my daughter, especially her, since she <laughs> was in middle school, she's been saying that she's stressed. She's almost a year off of college with a job. She's still stressed. I'm like, oh <laughs> my goodness, woman, you need like, like, let's like take that word out of your mouth. Yeah. And Change it for something else. How are you feeling? Good. Okay. I'm good. I'm great. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. 
how much just by saying that word alone it changes everything yes i was i was talking to you right now about the word stress and stress is like oh my god stress there's stress 50 to 75 percent of all doctors visits in the u.s alone is due to stress wow and, and what to do about this prevention prevention mm. prevention is the key to having a happier de-stress life that yeah. is my honest professional and personal opinion i work with tens of thousands of people in my career stacy and when i'm telling you that is the one word that i hear from 90 percent of all of these individuals yeah. and change needs to happen change i mean we are here to help in that aspect that's for sure now, when it comes to like mindset and, you know, cause sometimes the way we think, you know, a lot of people focus on the negative before they even focus on the positive, you know, and I always say you could take one positive thing out of every negative thing that occurs and, and that will help you mentally, you know, with your mindset, you know, something bad happens. Well, made me a stronger person. You know, if this happens, well, you know, I learned from it. It made me wiser, you know? And, and you could always like look at things differently, you know, and change your mindset. What are some changes you suggest that could help, you know, for people who are stuck in their, in their ways where they think a certain way and they're constantly focused on the negative or they're just, you know, they have a certain routine and it's very, you know, difficult for a lot of people to break those bad habits. You know, what do you suggest? We are beings of getting comfortable in our in, in our environments that is why it's so difficult to exercise change yeah but change is something that we are born with until the day we die yes From the moment we are born we're changing all the way to our passing so change is unavoidable changes affect changes the law in this human experience yes adapting to change is one of the most difficult, horrific things that us human beings go through. Yes. Change our mindsets will mean changing our lives. In my experience and learning from many powerful teachers, to learn lessons, we never learn lessons and we never grow out of being happy and cheerful and dandy and having this, this supposedly perfect life mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Changes happen by falling on our butts. Change happens with suffering. The lessons that we really, really learn come from hardships and being in very dark seasons. Yeah. But seasons change and this too shall pass don't exactly. stay looking at the back because there is a reason why cars have rear view mirrors and they're small yeah. you look back for a second and you look forward you are going forward learn the lesson lessons are here to be learned and everything in life happens for a reason yes and i mean i think about my own experiences with childhood trauma, the violent loss of my beloved father, mm -hmm. living around chronic untreated mental illnesses. I had not only my mother, but there was other family members with these situations. And living in that environment, which was very confusing, yeah, very tormenting, it was it was the lesson, it was the rooting that helped me be here. Yes. So I cannot be more grateful for mm -hmm. those moments because if I didn't learn my lessons, yeah. any of them, from whatever happened to me, I would never be able to move forward in my life. And doing it alone was not the best idea. Right. Once I started getting the help, either from books, I read many, many books. We have the beauty of, like I call it, the school of YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is 
a master, you whatever you want in life, you can get it on YouTube. I do many guided meditations from YouTube. Marissa Peer, she is a giant on this. Dr. Joe Dispensa, he is phenomenal. I follow him and I follow many other giants on the personal growth industry. Yeah. I recommend to everybody and anybody to like study your options. You will find, you will always find something that will work for you. And not exactly. only YouTube, they're all streaming services. They have programs, they have podcasts. That, that's why we are having this podcast right here, right now, to help others heal, to help others understand that yes. there is a way for improvement. There right. is a way for change. Change is a constant. And let me tell you something, change can be a very beautiful experience. And I'm very, very grateful and happy to express this right here, right now with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, you're amazing. You are so amazing. Oh, so are you, Stacy. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you wrote an amazing book. I want to hear a little about the book also. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have been, well, in, in my experience in this life, and quite a few times in my life, I said to myself, oh, my goodness, I've been through so much crap in this life that I could write a book about it. Yeah. Well, many years later, there was this random email that came in from um, a, a publish, publishing company that I actually know, the owner I know is, he's a giant on network marketing. And it says, would you like to be a book author? Let's have, let's, let's have a talk. Let's have a conversation. Right. Like, okay, well, I have nothing to lose and yeah. maybe I'll have something to gain. So I had a conversation with this person. It was supposed to be 15 minutes. It came out to 45 minutes and I, I got published. I am honored. This chapter, I said it all. I let it all out. Everything that was all of my secrets, which there were many, yeah, they came out on a chapter of a book. And this book has 29 other authors from all over the world, from all walks of life. And this book basically is about being in dark seasons, going down that rabbit hole, mm -hmm. getting out of that rabbit hole, and seeing going to the other side and it's a beautiful thing i'm honored i am this is one of my biggest achievements in life and the best part stacy is that all the proceeds of this book they go to mission blue for the Sil sylvia earl foundation for the protection of the oceans i don't make a penny out of this and that's my favorite part that is not really for profit is for help and helping on the helping on the mission to let others know that there yeah. is a way. There is always a way, no matter what age we are. Yeah. I published this book when I was 56 years old. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I mean, all of my life here and there and there saying, it's like, oh my goodness, I could write a book. And here it is many, many years later. So there's always a way. When there is a will, there is a way. And please don't let age limit you and stop you from yes. what we are all capable of doing very grateful very happy about it oh that's beautiful I'm so proud of you that's wonderful thank you that's thank so you. wonderful oh thank my you. goodness now what services do you offer because I know you have a bunch of services on your website what different things do you offer to people I offer life coaching and I became a life coach because I got life coaching first yeah. and I was so well I still am so mesmerized by the power of life coaching and I said well in my career I've been doing a lot of life coaching to many patients yeah. and I didn't even consciously know it until I immersed myself in life coaching right I help people stay in target B, I am their accountability partner. How mm -hmm. important is having an accountability partner 
in our journey. So life coaching involves all of that, body, mind, spirit. I go with the five Fs, which means mm -hmm. faith, fitness, family, fortune, and fun. Yeah. That is the basis of my coaching. I am a fitness instructor for 55 plus population. This was my calling ever since I moved to the U.S. 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose it. It chose me. I'm right. very grateful about it. I love to see the older population being highly active. Yes. There is no stopping because of age. Here we go again right. with mm -hmm. age. I'm a licensed massage therapist for the state of Florida for 19 years. My focus, um, my practice is medical massage therapy. Of course, I mentioned before, I work for Rehab Centers for Drug Addiction and Alcohol Abuse. Mm -hmm. And our purpose is to help these patients understand that there is a holistic way for their healing and not rely only on drugs, opioids, pills. Opioids is the biggest pandemic that there is. Mm -hmm. um, and I see it on a daily basis, right. how somebody out of having a, an auto accident become an addict because of op opioids. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge mission, my massage therapy. I'm a certified canine massage therapist for eight years. I love what I do. I'm a speaker, book author. I do many things. I mentor people for massage therapy. I'm a mentor for the American Massage Therapy Association. And I'm a mentor for Toastmasters as well. I am fully bilingual. I speak Spanish. I'm from Puerto Rico. So that is part of the beautiful things that I do. I love the hats that I wear. It brings a huge smile on my face every single day. And I'm a very grateful to God for giving me this mission in life. And here we go again, which is help people improve their quality of life. Because if I improve my quality of life, so can anybody else. That's exactly. for sure. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Love it. Love it. If you had to take three things you really want to emphasize, maybe three takeaways, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners today? This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, take care of yourself. Yes. Don't look for the outside to do that for you. Right. I love the saying in airplanes, in, a, in a, the event of an emergency, who puts the oxygen mask first? You do, so you can help everybody else with whatever situation is happening. Right. Self-care, prevention, this too shall pass. I promise you that. Oh, I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> this has been amazing, Blanca. You are an amazing woman. I'm so proud so of you. you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And you've done so much and you continue to help millions of people. And I, I just think it's wonderful what you're doing. And I, I'm really proud of you. And I thank really you. am honored to have you on the show and to have you share such, you know, valuable information and thank to you. help people, you know, look at life differently and maybe change some things in their own lives to better themselves, to better the quality of their life and to move forward in life so they could rise above the chaos and be courageous to be able to accomplish their dreams and make them a reality. So thank you so much, Blanca. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Stacey, for having me. What an honor to be here. And thank you for everything you do. Oh, thank you. And you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well. Thank you.